Hello and welcome to another Demis Helen tutorial. We're going to look at Tunefish 4 today and I'm going to go through all the basics of Tunefish uh, as it is a free synth so head over to the link in the description to get a copy of that or even the previous versions of Tunefish are all on there. So here we have uh, the UI, so I'm just going to quickly walk you through, which is global, the generator, then you have your shaping section, and then you have your effects section here, finalized with your mod matrix and your effects stack. So at the top, we have our global section. So we have our VU meter. We have our voices, volume, frequency, detune, Slop and glide. Slop is uh, it's like very gentle pitch modulation, and depending on the settings of the generator, um, you can create some weird and wacky effects there. Uh, glide, self-explanatory. We have our preset loader and renamer, and then you can save and load, etc. Here, turn off animations if you don't want to see things moving over here, and then we have our pitch wheel controls there. In the generator, we have, we're going to start from the bottom, we have our scope here so we can see exactly what sound we've created, which at the moment is a sine wave. And then you have your harmonics section here, so it shows you how many extra harmonics you're adding into your sound. This is then controlled by these controls above. And we have volume and panning, which are very self-explanatory. We have spread, which uh, if you have a sound set up here, let's just get rid of modulation. Um, spread is just going to increase the voices so if you have 10 voices you can spread them in your stereo field and we'll demonstrate that in a second um, if you have let's just get these back down if you have bandwidth what you're increasing is how many harmonics are in there and then how prominent they are with the harmonics dial so they work hand in hand dampening does exactly what it says so if you've got your settings there and you just want to dampen it down it will reduce them dampen the sound we have drive which basically changes the shape of your oscillator scale which is just doing exactly what it says it's increasing the scale so you can see we've got three peaks and troughs there at the moment but if we turn it down we've just got one so it's just increasing the scale and you'll hear how that sounds in a second and then modulation does exactly what it says starts modulating it back and forth so on the unison, we can have singular voicing, or we can have up to 10 voices, which is then controlled by the spread. So very, very obvious controls there for a synthesizer. And then we have our octave here. So we can have octave zero, or we can have minus four, which you got here. Or you can have plus four octaves. Then we have a noise generator here. And we have a noise frequency, which is then controlled by the bandwidth of the noise. So you can just have it in the bass. We can have it there, you can have it in the mids. Plenty of control. And finally, down at the bottom here, before we get on to the rest of the synth, we have our shaping tools. So we have a low pass, high pass, band pass, and a notch filter. And then we have an LFO times two, uh, which can be controlled by adding them into the mod matrix, and then uh, two envelopes. The envelopes aren't connected to anything uh, at all until you put them through the mod matrix. So it's not like a conventional synth where it's all connected up with one of the uh, envelopes already controlling the volume. Then we have our effects section here, right down from flanger to distortion. Uh, ones to avoid, in my opinion, are the reverb, if you're making trance, that is. It's not brilliant for the trance stuff, but it does depend on the sound you're making, so it can be used. Uh, and I would say delay, I'd, I'd just be tempted to use a, a third-party delay. Uh, okay, and then we have the mod matrix and the effects stack. So let's have a look at creating a sound. So I'm just going to play the synth behind. And we are going to create a sound. So first I want to create a saw wave. So how do I get from this sine wave to a saw wave? There's a combination of settings. So you can hear that's turn it into a square just by increasing the drive. It's a shame that you can't see this screen any bigger, but there is a square there. So there 
is sort of a saw. You're never going to get anything perfect. You could tweak it and tweak it till you get the right sound. That's more of a saw. And then more to a square. And you can kind of see from the shape here. It's a shame we just can't see it bigger. Uh, but there you go. We have a saw wave. So I want to have maybe four voices on this. which essentially just thins the sound out and does some crazy modulation as well. So it just thins the sound out a bit, sounds okay there. And then you can go really crazy. We can have just a little bit of modulation on there. You can see just one little dial uh, up to plus two gives you quite a big change in your sound. And then you can dampen that down a little bit. So I just want to get rid of that really sharp edge. That sounds good. And I'm just going to add a bit of noise in here. Okay, so I want to turn it plucky now, and we're going to add this first envelope to the volume. So over in the mod matrix, we're going to hit ADSR1, which is here, and we're going to set it to volume. Okay, so we have a plucky sound, but I only want it to be plucky when the low pass cuts off. So. Let's make the sound how we want here. Okay, so it's a bit longer. Sounds good. And we're going to pick ADSR2. And we're going to set that to low pass cutoff. And we're going to shape it. I'm just going to increase how much comes through. So then when we filter it in, we go from this one to this one on the settings. So very simple. It's just not set up straight away for you to use. So I'll turn the frequency just to one because it just turns it off. Okay, and then I want a little bit of an EQ change on here, so I can go into the effect stack and I can hit EQ and just take out the bass. A little bit of sparkle on top, have a bit of a mid cut, whatever you want to do, uh, and a bit of distortion. And there we are. We, we have a sound that can be easily used in trance, uh, depending on how you're going to make it. You could just use that as a singular rhythm instead of using it as this arpeggiator that I've got. And it's pretty good. It sounds really good. Uh, just got to get your head around using all this section here. Um, so what I'm going to demonstrate now just to finish off the video is we're going to load a bass uh, MIDI set here. And what we're going to do is hit preset 97. And we're going to turn all the settings down again because it always puts them on. Uh, we're going to have unison 1. Okay. So, we have a sine wave. I'm going to put something between a square and a saw. So, that's somewhere between. So, we're going to add some harmonics in just to give it a bit of bite. I'm going to turn the low pass on.
just use the same envelope to cut control the cutoff. Okay, so we have a bass line now, and if we were to copy some kicks onto it, we have a fairly decent sounding bass. Um, and then one of the better things that this can do really well um, is creating an acid sound. So if we was to just reset these, just create something on the lines of a saw wave, turn that low pass off, and we'll put um, a band pass on. Turn the key up. So you can create some really nice things. So if we add a little bit of distortion on there. Thing that we can do here is if we were to use LFO1 to control the band pass, so we can use the BP cutoff. So it's a, it's a shame that you can only control it from the bottom to the top, but you could create some nice... So if we was to go into our baseline here, let's just move this off screen. Copy our baseline over there, and we'll just repeat this section. And just have a line so you can hear that slop setting coming in there where it's just slightly acid sound there. And there you have it. Tunefish is quite versatile in my opinion and I think I will be using it for my acid lines. Uh, let's see what sort of presets I can create on there and I'll probably have an experiment with pads because at the moment I only really use Hive for pads. I just think it's really good. And Spire's good for pads as well, but uh, not as good as Hive in my opinion. So uh, that is Tunefish 4. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful and you learned a few things and how to use it, then let me know in the comments. I always like to hear that you've managed to suss something out or you've made a track using this. Just let me know. It's always nice to hear. Uh, leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. And finally, subscribe and hit that bell icon if you haven't already. The bell lets you see when I upload and you get first dibs on the comments. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.